They told me Solana was dead. Before I went to the conference, that's what they said. They said, don't bother going to the conference because Solana is absolutely dead. So what I decided to do was to go there and see for myself. And I want to show you guys today what I saw at the Solana conference today uh, here in Amsterdam. This is pre pretty much the scenes from the dead chain of Solana. 4,500 people in a room. We're going to talk about what's going on on Solana and whether Solana is, of course, a dead chain. Then I need to talk to you about something very important because we are entering a new era in Bitcoin. We have exited or we are exiting the old era. In the old era, we could front run the institutions. We were the ones who were front running the institutions. But now we are entering a new era where we won't be able to front run the institutions anymore. The early adopter phase is drawing to a, to a, to a close and soon we won't be able to front run the institutions anymore. So we're going to talk about what that means. And I'm going to show you how the institutions are actually getting a huge type of FOMO. And when the institutions get FOMO, it's much, much, much bigger than the FOMO that we get when we're retail trading. I'm actually going to show you stats. I'm going to show you numbers. I'm going to show you everything else. A couple of other things. I'm going to show you another token that's going to pump. I'm going to talk a lot about altcoins today because we do need to talk about the altcoins which are taking a break from their, if you want to call it, or I'm not going to say all-time highs, but certainly of their high levels, the altcoins are, are taking some kind of break. And then I think what we need to talk about is we need to talk about the Unibot hack and see whether or not we should actually be buying Unibot or not. So with all that, we've got a massive show. I'm here in Amsterdam, not the normal time, as you can see. And the reason why is because I've been at the Solana conference all day, but I am here and I am bringing you crypto love and I am bringing you crypto wisdom. And I think we've got a lot to go. So let's go. Let's do this. I know some of you are saying clickbait masters, but you know, the truth is everyone did say Solana was a dead chain and they said Solana is dead. And today I'm going to show you exactly whether or not Solana is dead. You guys are going to help me make a decision as to whether or not Solana is dead because you need to get the information firsthand. And I don't know any other channel that brings you information like this firsthand from Amsterdam on the day of the conference. I'm going to bring you live things and I'm going to show you exactly what's happening at the Solana conference. Good, big, big, big updates for you on Bitcoin as well today, because we are entering a new phase. We are entering a phase of institutional FOMO and the institutions are causing a new type of flippening. And we have to talk about this flippening and what the new type of flippening means for us. Usually a flippening is when the price of ETH refers to when the price of ETH or the market cap of ETH grows above the market cap of Bitcoin. But today, I'm going to show you a new flippening, which is actually caused by the institutions and the, and the FOMO that the institutions are getting. Then I'm going to show you a token that is going to run in the next week, just like I told you Solana was going to run and I was 100% right. I'm going to show you the next Solana. So there's lots to do. If you want to know what the token is that's going to run, we need 1,500 likes. Otherwise, I'm not releasing that token for you guys here today. So if you're new to the channel, smash that subscribe button, obliterate the subscribe button. There is no other channel that brings you this kind of access each and every day. And you can see the work ethic that we have around here. Even though I've been up, I was out late last night. I was up early this morning. I went to a conference all day today. Right now it's seven o'clock here and I'm bringing you crypto love and crypto wisdom, sharing everything with you. And also yeah, so smash a like, subscribe to the channel. Let's quickly just go into the banter bubbles and see what's happening on the bubbles. Here we go. We are in the bubbles right now. Um, it's a mixed day. I wouldn't worry too much about this. I wouldn't worry too much about the mixed day. Let's quickly just toggle to the hourly. So let's see, it's a, it's a mixed hour. It's a mixed day. You can see Rune is up 5.91%. But I think what's happening here is we're getting the RSIs starting to take a bit of a breather. Because if you look at the RSIs for the four hour, you see that they're starting to come down. And they're starting to come down because the market did get a little bit overheated on the short time frame. Not too worried because if you look at it on the one week time frame, we're not overheated on any of the RSIs. And just remember, guys, if you are in the banter bubbles, just click on this win a Bitcoin link. And then what I want you guys to do is I want you guys to go in there and I want you guys to obliterate 
the predictions. How it works is very simple. If you want to win a full Bitcoin, this is a, a real promotion, okay? This is a real promotion. What you need to do, you need to open an exchange account with any of our exchange partners, preferably open it on Bybit because you get $30,000 in bonuses. Just click this button here. You'll then be taken to the sign up page. Sign up, you get five predictions. If you can predict the price of Bitcoin on the first of the first 2024 at 0001 EST on Coinbase, then you can win a half a Bitcoin. And if you've traded 10 times in your account and trading 10 times now is so, so, so easy, you will get another half of a Bitcoin. So you'll actually win a full Bitcoin. Now, if my prediction is right, by the end of the year, that'll be worth $50,000. So here's the chance for you to really win $50,000. Go to Banter Bubbles, click on the win a Bitcoin link, make your predictions. I see Novovich predicted a few seconds ago. He says 39, 48. He doesn't know what he's talking about. He's way too conservative. Albert Flipson, he was on 11 minutes ago. He said 43,652. He's wrong too. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you think in, in, in the comments. Anyway, let's move on to the alpha of today because I have to get from here. I need to go for dinner and I need to go and, you know, do what you do when you're in Amsterdam. And if you've been in Amsterdam, you'll know exactly, exactly, exactly what I'm talking about. So let's get into the, 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 um, the alpha of today's show. And I think what we should do is we should start off by looking at the Bitcoin price. Bitcoin, of course, is fighting this resistance. I told you this resistance is not going to just go away. This is the flip into the bullish territory that would give us this, this whole bull thing, this whole bull trend for the whole year. As it comes to um, the monthly, today is the last day of the monthly close. Now, I said at the beginning of October, I said that Bitcoin would close the month 23.5% up. It looks like I'm going to be proven wrong. Bitcoin's going to close the month 27 and a half percent up okay so 27 and a half percent up instead of 23 and a half percent up now the good news is so here's some really 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 real good news for you guys the good news is that in any previous cycle first of all the good news is that november as you can see over here is the best month for bitcoin across all months if you take bitcoin across all months since the inception of bitcoin and by the way the inception of bitcoin is was the white paper was exactly uh, 15 years ago. So exactly 15 years ago, we had the, the Bitcoin white paper. Written. And you can see Gary Gensler, even Gary Gensler, writes this very, very, very weird um, uh, 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 message. He says, if Satoshi Nakamoto went for Halloween, um, if Satoshi Nakamoto went, sorry, if Satoshi Nakamoto went as Satoshi Nakamoto for Halloween, would we be able to tell? Happy 15th anniversary uh, to Satoshi's famous white paper that started crypto. Any crypto companies that are tricking investors should be treating them to compliance with securities laws. This is the head of the SEC. I mean, Gary Gensler has gone absolutely crazy. Anyway, so where are we? In November is generally the best month for Bitcoin. But in this November specifically, it's a pre-halving year. And the, other, the previous pre-halving year, we had a 21.44% increase in November. I think that this November is going to be different. I think it's going to be even, even um, harder. And I'll tell you why. First of all, as I said, we are moving into range four. Range four takes us into all-time highs, all-time high territories or previous uh, high territory. But more importantly, we are tracking similar to, the, to all the other cycles. So if you look at all the other cycles, in Bitcoin is 113% up since the cycle low, which aligns with the two cycles, 15 and 18. The first one was 116%, the other one was 164%. So, so far, we are tracking exactly like, um, uh, uh, um, like all the other previous cycles. But this time, we have another, another force at play. And that other force at play is exactly what you're seeing on the screen. It is the institutional FOMO which is about to hit the market because right now the institutions are getting a very, very, very um, big FOMO, very unique FOMO. They're sitting here like we sit at the slot machines and go, come on, come on, come on. We want to buy and we want to buy and we want to buy. And the latest, the latest indicator of this FOMO, okay, the latest indicator of this FOMO is Stan Drunkenmiller. Now, Stan Drunkenmiller is one of the world's most renowned investors. And yesterday he was interviewed with Paul Tudor Jones. And I want you to hear what he said about, uh, um, about Bitcoin, because this just shows the type of um, FOMO that the institutions are trying to get. We're living through 
we're living through a marketing exercise that has been done since since um, Larry Fink went up and said that Bitcoin is 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 a store of, is a safe haven and a store of value. We're moving into this new era of institutional FOMO. We've had many other institutions come out, and the latest of these is Stan Drunk and Miller. Listen to what he said. So he says, look, the young people like Bitcoin. He says, I don't really own any Bitcoin, but I should own Bitcoin. Sound is too low. Is it is that the YouTube sound or is it my sound? How, how's my sound, guys? Can you hear me? Just give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. Okay, someone said you can't hear them. Uh, okay, well, well, I don't know if you if you heard that at all, but he said uh, he, I don't know why you guys can't hear that. Let's see if we can if we can fix that. Uh, mic check, one, two, one, two. Can, can you hear that? Okay, hold on. Pa Paolo is giving me a message. Paolo, what are you saying about the sound? It's a little, it's a little low. It's a little low. All right, let me, let, let's try another, let's try another video. Could this be that video? So what we are seeing is we are seeing the institutional FOMO. And what he said is, he said he is, uh, he doesn't own any Bitcoin, but he actually probably should hold Bitcoin. Now, you know, when, when Stan Drunken Miller says he probably should hold Bitcoin, that is, the sentiment that he's feeling the one thing that he says is he says the younger people he said the younger people said um uh, 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 like bitcoin and so i pulled up this demographic chart and you can see how the familiarity of bitcoin is starting to grow um season on season so if you look at at, at season on season how the familiarity of bitcoin is actually starting to grow now Another person who's also talking about Bitcoin is Muhammad Alerian. I don't know if you guys can hear this. Let me know in, in, the, in the comments if you guys can we hear this. We haven't had it been the safe haven. We haven't seen the flight quality and the flight to safety that you would expect given what's happening in the world. The second thing that's, that's equally counterintuitive is you have people talking about Bitcoins, about equity being the safe asset because they've lost confidence in government bonds being the safe assets because of the nature of this interest rate risk. So, I mean, this is Mohammed Alerian, and he's saying they moving away from government treasuries as a safe haven and moving into Bitcoin as a safe haven. This is Mohammed Alerian, who represents a, a very, very uh, conservative type of, of, of investor. And that's why I say I think we're moving into a completely new era when it comes into Bitcoin. The previous era was a very unique era for Bitcoin investing. It was an era where we as retail investors could front run the institutions because the institutions had no way to invest in our asset class because very difficult for an institution to invest in our asset class. And it is very, very unique to get an opportunity in any asset class to front run the big money. It doesn't usually happen. Now, we've just had that uh, moment when it comes to Bitcoin. It says um, the era of Bitcoin hardless fund running institutions will end any day now. We're coming to the end of it. The early adopter phase is drawing to a close. Soon the hordes will arrive with their fat sacks of fiat. They will try to persuade you to part with your finite Bitcoin. They will bid you relentlessly. Remember what you own and only exchange it if it means a better life for you and your family. It's been, a, um, it's been an honor front running the suits with you all. Good luck. I really agree with this tweet because I know that how long and how hard we've been stacking our Bitcoin while they haven't been able to. And what I can see now is that they are on the verge of, of coming into, of doing this. And of course, why are they on the verge? Because when they look at the returns of Bitcoin, this is what a fund manager sees. Okay, You look at the 10-year annual compounded return. 
On a 10-year an annual compounded return, Bitcoin has 196%. No other asset comes close. Tesla comes at 63.8%, and Amazon comes at 33.5%. Now, as a fund manager, how do you not invest in an asset that does that? And again, you can see it like that. If you look at the cumulative return for Bitcoin versus any other asset class, you, you, you just simply can't compare. And so now what this FOMO is causing is this FOMO is causing a new type of flippening. And I know usually we talk about the flippening as the day when the Ethereum market cap beats the Bitcoin market cap. That is what we call the flippening. But ladies and gentlemen, we are now dealing with a new kind of flippening. It's the kind of flippening that I never in my wildest dreams thought that we would achieve here in crypto. I mean, I hoped we would, but I didn't think it would actually happen. And I want to show you the kind of flippening that we are actually seeing right now. So this is the chart of the flippening. You can see the chart over here. That's the chart of the flippening. A lot of you guys are saying, well, what is this and how is it a flippening? Let me show you how it's a flippening. This black line over here is the Binance open interest, the Binance leverage over here. And this pink line here is the leverage on the CME futures. And what you can see is that very, very, very soon, the leverage taken out by the institutions is going to be bigger than the leverage on the Binance exchange. So this is a percentage of, of open interest that Binance holds. This is a percentage of open interest that CME holds. What you can say is you can say, that the flippening is that the institutions will become or have will become more uh, bigger traders in the Bitcoin market than the retail investor. Up until now, the retail investor has completely dominated the institutional investor. But now what you can see is you can see that over here, you can see that the CME is starting to get much more traction when it comes to Bitcoin. So let me show you uh, a few other uh, uh, um, uh, pieces of data. So in this time period, you saw that the CME did 3.56 billion in open interest in, in leverage trades, and Binance had 3.84, which means that we are getting to a point where we are getting very, very close to the flippening here. We, we are getting close to the flipping. You can see it again in that chart over there. Um, Gabor Gobax, who, who used to work for Van Eck, or I think he, he, may, he may even still work at Van Eck. He says, uh, yeah, he's, he's an advisor to Van Eck. He says, the CME is about to flip Binance as the largest exchange with respect to Bitcoin futures open interest. Institutions are here and it's just getting started. And what he says, which is the most important part, is he says that this is just the beginning because first it's the futures, but when the futures, when they can, the spot market or the physical market will actually follow. So right now we're seeing this new kind of, 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 of flippening. Um, as I said to you, it, was, it is this pink line. And I think within the next couple of days, these institutions with all their FOMO are going to get, are going to, are going to overtake us when it comes to retail traders. Now, that doesn't mean that we are trading less, even though we are trading less. It doesn't mean that retailers are trading less. It just means that the institutions are coming in and trading more. Now, you're going to make a decision now. You know this is happening. You need to make a decision whether when the institutions come, you're going to part with your Bitcoin or not. If you are going to part with your Bitcoin, make sure there's a good reason. Make sure there's, there's a very, very, very good reason because the hoard is about to come. And if you're selling now before the hoard arrives, I don't know what you're doing because when the spot, when the spot comes, when the spot buying starts to come up, um, it's crazy. You know what it is? It's exactly like this. Someone said, this is like all of us sitting here waiting for the institutional, uh, for the ETF to give us the institutional takeoff. It's exactly like this, this image. I love this image. I love this, this, uh, this uh, uh, video of all of us sitting waiting for takeoff for the, um, for the Bitcoin spot, ET from the Bitcoin spot ETF. So we are at this new juncture. We are getting this new kind of FOMO in the market. Be careful. You now know about the FOMO in the market. You have been warned. Uh, someone's complaining about my mic. Let me try and change something here for you guys. Okay. Can you guys, I think it's fine. I think my mic sounds fine to me. I don't know if, is anything wrong with my mic? I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, all right. Let's go on to uh, the next thing, which I want to show you. I want to show you that this this bull market is not us, guys. It's not us. I keep showing you guys that, that it's not us. Um, 
it remember our leverage is still very much down it's the institutions that are coming in you can also see that we haven't had that much of an uptick in us dollar usd inflows into the market so yes we've stopped the outflows of usd but we haven't got the inflows in the market yet so imagine the bull run that we'll get when the inflows start to come in the market it's almost like a bucket we 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 plugged all the holes in the bucket so no more water is leaking out of our bucket but 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 someone says peace no water says we're waiting bro we're all waiting bro we're all just chilling here on the fence we're all we're all waiting um so when the the usd comes in and we actually start getting new water in our bucket then that's what, when it's going to happen but it's not happening yet i mean we are starting to see a little bit more retail interest you can see on, on the wikipedia page we've had some more hits on bitcoin you can see when it comes to youtube views just look over here just look at like we've had a little spike in youtube views i mean we see we we're on a downtrend and a downtrend and downtrend we've now got the higher high in terms of youtube views that shows you where the um that shows you where the retail interest is you see so the retailers we are starting to come back but we're not exactly there you can see the same thing with reddit subscribers to to any crypto to channels this is being driven by the institutions that's the institutions over there that's the institutions over here right now this bull market is not in our hands the only thing that is actually in our hands is when we want to sell that's the only thing that's in your hands right now everything else is out of your hands the only thing that's in your hands is when you want to sell and how much money you want to make when you sell and what you're going to do with the money that's it that's the only thing that's left in your hands what do you think let me know in the comments I'm not a motivational speaker. I'm just presenting it. Eric says the run is the best motivational speaker. I'm not a motivational speaker. I'm just trying to show you exactly what I'm saying. Someone says downtrend due to clickbait thumbnails. There's no clickbait yet. When I went to Solana, everyone told me that Solana is a dead chain. Don't even bother going to the break point this year. Solana's dead. It's never, ever, ever coming back. So I arrived at Solana this morning and I have to show you guys. I had no expectations. I mean, yes, I did say that I think the price was going to run to 35 or 36 dollars and I mean, let's just quickly just for a litmus check, let's just see what I said. I said I think Sol hit 35 during breakpoint 2 weeks ago. We are now at let's quickly just have a look here. S S, -S O L U S D. Let's see where we're at. 36.19. Okay, so I was I was a dollar 19 off. I think you can forgive me for that. I, this time I was a dollar 19 to the upside here again i was i was off by three percent to the upside i said 23 percent is 27 percent. i think it's okay i think it's okay i think you can forgive me i think you can forgive me but anyway a year ago you all told me let's just have a look here you all told me that solana was dead i don't know if you remember these are these are some of the posts um reasons why solana is dead and going to zero this is what this post was called this post was written in december 27 2022 Solana was backed by one of the biggest frauds in history. The media portrayed him as a boy genius wunderkind um, who made people invest in an average in an average blockchain. Now he's disgraced, maybe facing life in prison. FTX is committing fraud. Multi-chain capital, the biggest advocates for both FTX and Solana took a massive hit. So therefore, they're not going to invest in Solana anymore. In addition, many projects turning, choosing to return or build on Ethereum because of the advancement of layer two technologies, as long as well as the constant outages on Solana, many celebrities who were sitting Solana are now no longer sitting Solana and FTX. And most of the develop, develop activity was faked by one guy who has left since. These are all the reasons why Solana was actually dead. Reuters also said that Solana was going to die. Um, Solana is now down 73% of the past eight weeks. The FUD is strong. Read our takes on the metrics, and this this take said that Solana is pretty much going to die. Then you had Ben Armstrong, BitBoy Crypto. He said he spreads FUD calls on Solana, asking in FUD calls on Solana, asking investors to run. Now remember this, because I'm going to show you something very, very, very funny. That Ben Armstrong, the same Ben Armstrong, who is who um who said that that uh, uh, Solana is dead and told everyone to run is now making videos will solana 100x into the 2024 bull run he's also um tweeting tweeting out things like good morning solana i think i was saying tweeting stuff like good morning solana soldiers he's calling himself the sultan of solana okay that that that's pretty much what ben armstrong is calling himself if indeed he is the sultan of solana i have to ask you a question right 
if BitBoy is the Sultan of Solana, and if all of a sudden he really does like Solana, why didn't he come to Solana Breakpoint? I mean, or was he going to do a fundraiser like he did the last time to get him back up, up on his feet? Maybe he should have done a fundraiser for a ticket to get to the Solana conference. You know, if, if, he, you know, if, if he is indeed the Sultan of Solana, do a fundraiser, do a, do a fundraiser um, and do it. He's just jumping on the bandwagon, but the problem is the Solana... Uh, 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 people aren't going to fall for his his nonsense. There are some communities that did fall for his nonsense, but Solana isn't going to do it. Anyway, Solana was dead. Everyone said it was dead. D gods projects moved. D gods. I don't know if you guys remember, but D gods moved uh, to Ethereum because 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 they were so scared of Solana. Anyway, here we are, one year later. One year ago, Solana died. One year ago, in fact, in about six days, that was one year since FTX collapsed, and everyone said that Solana was going to die. So. Let's look at this. One, one year later, where are we? Is Solana dead? So I went to Breakpoint today, and I want to show you exactly what I saw, and I want to explain to you exactly what I saw, and then we'll make a decision whether or not Solana is dead or Solana is alive. First of all, there are heaps of people in Amsterdam which all came to this conference. They all came for one reason. They came for this conference. This is the um, scenes. Localized few markets, state compression, of 4,500 people or whatever the number is in the hall today, there was no space to sit. You can see all the people over here standing at the back of the, of the Solana conference, trying to listen to some of the talks here in Solana. Now, the, the hall is very, 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 like the, the conference is, is very, very big. You've got the main center. You've got a developer's corner. You've got an innovation corner. You've got many, many, many things here. And you can see over here, I've filmed for you. This is one of the halls, not the main hall. And you can see over here, this is the innovation center, another one of the halls. Okay, so I think, I think we, 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 we filmed the same, the same hall twice. But the, 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 what you can see is that there's a lot of people there. Now, who are these people that came to Solana? Well, I must say that the people that came to Solana conference aren't very much retail investors. So it's not really retail investors. And if you look at the caliber of person that's there, there is a lot of brain power there. These are developers. These are investors. These are very serious investors. And the type of talk that they've got going on on, on Solana is very much protocol focused, developer focused. It's not retail invest, make, make a, a ROI. While the price of Solana was going down, these guys decided that they're just going to carry on building. And what they did was they focused on the protocol itself and they developed very much um, the, the protocol and making the protocol really fast and really cheap. And a lot of developers did leave, that's for sure, but a whole lot of developers have actually come back. And that is because of the... the um, uh, uh, um, the, 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 the improvements that they've made on the protocol itself, on the Solana protocol itself. Now, one of the things that I want to show you around, the, around Solana is the launch of this thing called Fire Dance. And I want to show you what Fire Dance is, and I want to show you what it actually means. These guys have been hustling hard, um, really done a lot of work. I've been chatting with them. They've been working around the clock for the last couple of weeks, and I am really excited to announce that right now, First version of Fire Dancer is live on Testnet. So they have been working very much on this thing called Fire Dance. And a lot of people don't, don't know what Fire Dance is. I'm going to try and simplify it for you. What the Fire Dancer is, is a re-engineering of the Solana validator client. So what I mean by that is there's a piece of, let's call it a piece of software that allows you to, to validate the, the transactions. It's the validator client. And up until now, there's only been one version of this client, which was actually made by Solana themselves when they developed the blockchain. But then Jump Capital, you know Jump, the company that invested a lot of money in crypto last year, well, they decided that they wanted to write a new version of this validator client, and they wanted to build it from the bottom up to optimize it for speed. And that's exactly what they did. And that Fire Dancer is now live on Solana, now or on Testnet. Now, let's just understand what we mean 
by improving it. So just listen to what these improvements are. A network are. interface card on your server, it can handle one gigabit, five gigabit, 25 gigabits. This thing was running four cores, no problem. Um, scales up, network interface cards get faster, we put more cores on the machine. You can imagine this continues to scale to millions and millions of transactions that this is handling, no problem. Okay, so one million transactions per second per tile, but you can run multiple tiles. Transactions are great, but you gotta create blocks, you gotta send them out to the... Okay, so, so essentially what you've got is you've got this new validator client that has been built. And this makes Solana so fast that it actually generates one million transactions per second, or can do up to one million transactions per second. And that really changes the game because if you've got one million transactions per second and they're very, very, very cheap because that's exactly what's happening on Solana, a lot of the big companies like Visa, who was there today, Jeremy Allaire said, I can get behind an internet financial system with this kind of network performance. Visa was at Solana today. Uh, Google was at Solana today making announcements. Um, uh, Amazon, AWS was at Solana today making announcements. So, what I'm trying to show you is Solana goes live on Google's Cloud BigQuery data. So you can now, on using Google Cloud's BigQuery, you can now look for blockchain information on Solana. So what, what we saw is we saw that a lot of developers, a lot of smart people in a room, and these developers are all building on Solana. And I asked them, I said, guys, why are you building on Solana? I was, you know me, I like to prod people and I like to test people. I said, guys, why are you building on Solana when you can go and build on ETH layer two? You've got ETH layer two. So why are you building on Solana when you can build an ETH layer two? And they said, you know what it is? When you have two layers, you have two headaches. You got to bridge coins, coins aren't, re uh, bridges aren't really reliable. You got to get your coins, you know, bridge it to Polygon, bridge it off Polygon. And they said, look, with Solana, everything actually settles on the chain. You don't have to bridge from point A to point B. And that makes a huge difference. It, from a development point of view, makes a huge difference. And that's why the developers are actually there. Now, people are saying, well, how is Solana the best chain when it's disconnected most of the time? Well, it's not most of the time. They've had about 10 months of not having downtime. And remember that the reason why they were having the downtime was because it was so cheap to make transactions on the network that people made spam transactions on the network to try and intentionally, intentionally try and crash the network and they didn't really succeed. So I think the point that I'm trying to make is that whilst the price was down, they just carried on building. And what they've got now is they've got this unbelievable, unbelievable product where there's really no other layer one blockchain that even comes close to the performance of Solana and the, the, the develop activity on Solana. And I think that what's going to happen is we're going to get Solana as the number one blockchain. Then we're going to get a number two, I mean, uh, uh, Bitcoin as the number one blockchain. Then we're going to have Ethereum as the number two. And I think very, very, very soon, you're going to get Solana as the number three. So when you look at your CoinGecko, when you go to your CoinGecko, you can see which tokens I've been looking at a little bit. Um, but when you go to CoinGecko, I think what's going to happen very soon is you're going to have Bitcoin, Ethereum, and then I think Solana is going to go all the way up and be the number three blockchain. I don't know if it's going to happen in another week or another month. I don't know what it, when it's going to happen, but I think that that's my prediction for what's going to happen. My last prediction was, I said to you, I think Solana is going to hit 35 during breakpoint. It, it did hit 35, it hit 36.24. We're seeing all the metrics are now super healthy. The DEX volume is at the highest level. Um, the momentum has changed. Ben, ben Armstrong is the sultan of Solana who said that Solana was dead and everybody must leave. He's back. He's making videos about Solana 100xing. Van Eck is, is writing institutional type reports. Uh, which say that we could get up to 3,211 by, I told you what I, think, what I think about that. The other thing that we're seeing in Solana is we're seeing that the institutions are starting to invest in Solana. So this is the um, coin shares inflows and outflows. And what you can see is if you look at the month to date inflows, Bitcoin had a huge inflow, Ethereum had an outflow, multi-asset had an outflow, and the biggest jump by far is Solana because there's $66.9 million actually put into Solana. So you can see what's happening here. There's a shift. And that shift is that the institutions are starting to see the value of Solana. And it reminds me very much of Ethereum in many, many respects. The first respect where it reminds me very, very much of Ethereum is 
the first time I went to an Ethereum DevCon, I remember seeing the brain power in one room. And I remember thinking to myself, I've never seen so many smart people in one room at one time. Now, today I got that same feeling. I got that, that same feeling of no more tourists and actually just gigabytes of brain power in the Solana DevCon. And that's what I saw. Now, if Solana does play out like Ethereum, I mean, you can look at this fractal over here. The, everyone's saying that Solana is playing out exactly like Ethereum was playing out from its life point of view. And you can see that that's exactly what happened. It's starting to move up. And maybe this fractal can repeat itself. In fact, if I were to put my money and I have put my money down, then, um, you know, if, I mean, let's just quickly see if I can show you one, my, my sole position. I don't want to, I don't want to just, I want to just make sure that I'm actually logged in. Um, so you can see here, my, here's my sole position. This is just one of my positions. You can see that position is 556 thousand dollars up um it's five hundred and fifty six thousand dollars up with five hundred and sixty fifty six percent up with one hundred and forty three thousand dollars the other one that's doing very well is my rune position which is one hundred and eight thousand dollars up and my stargate position not doing not doing fantastic but not not bad i think it, it still it still has some time to go so that's what i think around solana i think that it's not dead i think that in fact if it's 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 probably just about to come back to life and and destroy destroy um destroy uh, uh, uh become into number three spot anyway keep going keep going um keep going everyone says uh, ben's living rent free in my head you know why you know why why that happened because i was always a big ben supporter and then he went and ranted on about me in one of his videos about how i'm such a bad person and i thought you know fuck you i've always been the one who supported you and i've always like offered you help and advice and then you went and went uh, all tilt mode on me so pff. All right, you can do what you want to do. All right, uh, Paula, how many more likes have? We, how many likes have we got? How, what's the like situation? Right now we're at thirteen hundred. Okay, thirteen hundred. Um, While you guys are smashing up the other two hundred likes, I want to just quickly show you something. Um, we are in crazy, crazy, crazy old season now, and in crazy old season, you need to know how to trade. I didn't know how to trade. I'll be honest with you. And the person that, and I went on, and did many trading courses. I did Gary's trading course. I've done Carl's trading course. But the person that has the, the, um, the simplest way of trading and the best systems that I've seen for trading is Sheldon. I want to show you something, something that he, he published today. We'll go into the, the token in, in just a second. The one that I told you is going to fly in the next week. But just listen to this. All you are fighting for in crypto is the actual entry. So your stop loss, they're actually there to make you get a better entry. Look here, long trend to the downside. There's a little breakout over there. I buy the token and I pop my stop loss under the previous low. What happened? Price went, you would have maybe held for a while. Eventually, it came back in. Boom. Ah, okay, I just lost 9%. I started a thousand bucks, lost 9%. You know, I'm down to 910 now. Okay, a few weeks later, we have this long trend here. One, two, three, four, five touches. We break that trend. Okay, amazing. I'm in again. <laughs> I put my stop loss under the previous low. What happens a few days later? Boom! Get completely smashed. Ah, another 9%. Okay, now I'm down to 8, 8.30. Time goes on. Form another trend. I enter there. Break of trend. Enter the trade. Boom! I get stopped. I lose another 5%. Now I'm down to 7.90. Find another trend. Get another entry. Until the one day I get the correct trade. I survive the stop loss. Breakout, survive. And now I'm 107% up. Okay, so now that is one of the systems that he actually teaches you how to learn. He shows you how to, how and when you're going to take losses. Now, there is one more free cohort for Sheldon's Sniper School. There's only one more. And under this, this video, there is a link to Sheldon's uh, course. I'm going to be doing it because I just want to do it again one last there time. Is a link. I have done it. Uh, I have done it before. I want to do it one last time. So, so if you want to join me and, and be in the class here, click on this link over here and sign up. The course starts next week. You can still get in. The numbers are limited. The numbers are limited. Get in. Get in now while you can. The other thing is, guys, we so do this course with me. It's the last time it's going to be free. Then it's going to become $2,999 if you haven't done it. So just do it. Just trust me. If you've been procrastinating, this is the course that's actually going to teach you how to trade. Um, so go, 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 go. Sign up now. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. In fact, while I'm waiting, um, Deribit, Remember that there's the options trading competition. A lot of you have signed up, but you've got to go into our team. So you've got to join the team. You've got to go here and you've got to search for, the, I'm not logged in, but you've got to search for the crypto banter teams, Ryan and Sheldon, and you guys have got to sign up in, um, sign up for those, for the, for the competition to get your free option and to get your 50 bucks. I know some of you signed up, but you've got to be able to do that. 
Anyway, I did say that I was going to show you a token that was going to run. So I did say to you that Solana was going to get to $35 ahead of its DevCon. And as you can see, we are, we are, um, we are running, we, we did hit over $35. Someone said the show came on late today. You're right. Um, the show did come on. Uh, the show did come on late because I'm, I'm in Solana, bring, I'm in Amsterdam, bring you Solana DevCon uh, uh, events. So anyway, the reason why Solana pumped was because of Breakpoint, because, because we knew there was going to be big announcements. And that's why I think Render is going to pump before Thursday and a whole lot of others. The next one that is happening, a similar Breakpoint, and it actually has started running, is actually near Protocol. So they have an event in Lisbon on the 6th and 7th, on the 7th to 10th of November. Why did they do 7th to 10th? They wanted everybody to come to Europe for Solana and then get on a hop on a train and go to the near conference. Now you can see that we are starting to climb going into Neocon. So look at the 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 the, the rise of of near going into Neocon. So keep your eyes on this because I think this one you might actually still get you might actually still get uh, some entries here. All right, I just want to talk for a few more minutes about the Unibot hack. So we all know this morning Unibot, which is a, a bot that we've been talking about, was hacked. Um, it was trading at about 60 bucks before the hack. Now it's trading at 41.27. The good news is that they've said that they're going to refund anybody that was affected by the hack. The, the, the effects of the hack are about um, $600,000. The root cause for the hack is a, a C, what's a C-A-L-L injection where the attacker can custom malicious call data into the thing. Lo long story short, forget about the thing. Right now it's trading at $41. I've taken a position because I think this team can recover. So I've taken a bit of a position. I'm not telling you whether or not to take a position. I'm just telling you what I've taken, what I've taken uh, as a position. All right, then some more blockchain news. So we had the launch today of Celestia. So I don't know if you guys have been following. Right now you've got Celestia trading at $2.32. What is Celestia? So Celestia is a Cosmos layer one chain now what this chain does is it's a, it's a highly 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 anticipated launch and you can see that the investors are big investors so balaji is an investor blockchain capital polychain capital this is one of the most backed um launches out there now be careful because if you're buying it now at two dollars 33 um you are giving the seed investors now we don't know how much how many seed investors but you're giving them a 233x because they invested $1.5 million at one cent. Then they had the private sale, which was at 10 cents, and they raised another $15 million. Those guys are 25 cents up. And then we had a, a, a private two, which is at a, value, a raise of $40, $40 million, and, and that was raised at $1. So all of these guys are up a lot. If you buying, if you buying at these levels, you guys are feeding these, these, the, these investors. Now, what is it? Well, essentially what it is, is it, it's a, a modular blockchain that allows anybody, not anybody, but allows people to build their own blockchains with, with different layers. So you can decide where, like how to settle your blockchain, how to validate your blockchain and stuff like that, which will mean that people can build blockchains much quicker. So it's a very promising piece of technology, a very, very, very promising piece of technology. But as I say, I'm a bit worried about the fact that these guys have got a 250% return I don't like tokens where, where these guys have got a 250 a 50 return, and you are the reason why these guys are getting a 250 return. Um, we could go through a tether attestation report. Not much in here. I mean, other than the fact that they own 72 billion dollars in 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 T bills, which means that they're very 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 big T bill holders. Here are some of my trades. So my Solana trade is up 143 percent. My 143 thousand dollars. My Rune is 109 thousand dollars. My Stargate. My Near is down, but I'm going to average down now because of Neocon. So I'm actually going to take some more uh, Near ahead of uh, ahead of Neocon. Um, I guess that is it for today, guys. I think we'll be back here tomorrow. Again, it'll probably be at a different time. It probably won't be <clears throat> at the normal show time because uh, I'm going to be at the Solana conference again. So it'll probably we'll do another late show like this. So make sure that you're subscribed. Make sure that you've hit the, the, the notification bell to know when I'm coming on. Make sure that you guys have predicted in the Bitcoin competition. And if you haven't, go and get the Bybit bonus. Tomorrow, I'm going to be giving away $1,000 to anyone who's opened a Bybit account. We're going to be drawing three or $4,000. So just do it. Um, here it is over here. Uh, otherwise, if you've got a banter link already, you can use any banter link. 
I'm going to go and have a good time in Amsterdam. I will see you guys again tomorrow. Until then, trade well, my friends. <laughs>